Hi, so uh, today I'm going to demonstrate uh, this uh, recent little toy I got, the BG7 TBL Noise Source. This is the, uh, I believe it's the March 6, 2016 version of it. Um, I'm going to demonstrate how I found one use for it to, um, to uh, demonstrate and show the response of one of my little uh, DXing high frequency filters. This one in particular is the 1.8 MHz high pass filter that I believe I built on one of my other videos. Anyway, I'm going to demonstrate that and uh, show how you can use it with SDR Sharp to kind of get an uh, idea of uh, the response for these filters. So here's the setup I'm using today. It differs slightly in the other filter demonstration setups uh, in that I'm using two uh, TV switch boxes to switch the filter, uh, filtered side in or the full-on uh, noise source. I'll be using the BG7 PBL noise source which uh, puts noise from DC up to over a gigahertz. Um, from the noise source I have some small RG174 cable into the first uh, splitter which splits it to the full noise source or the filtered noise source and then back into another splitter um, which sends it into the SDR and the high frequency up converter. Um, I used two splitters this time in hopes that uh, I'll isolate uh, the filter a little bit more from the noise source when I have the filter in uh, so that we don't have any bleed over. Um, so anyway, this is the setup I'll be using. If you have any questions, you can always ask me. Feel free to. What we have here is the standard uh, SDR Sharp uh, screen that I use for a lot of my other videos and filter demonstrations and, and showing uh, how to use my SDR and the up converter and such. And right now the noise source is off and it's down about, uh, it's about minus 60 decibels right here. And then when I turn the noise source on, uh, it goes up to about uh, minus 15 decibels or so. So that's about 45 decibels of signal um, in this range. And right now, uh, right now my screen is centered at 2.1 megahertz. So right now the full filter is going through the uh, bypass on the setup I showed you. And when I turn uh, the, switch, the switches over to the filter, the 1.8 megahertz high pass filter, uh, you can see right here you see the filter response this is actually an artifact over here of SDR but you can see the filter response um, down from the minus 15 decibels down to about minus 30 maybe slightly below that so the filter is attenuating the signal about 15 decibels and it comes in uh, right about 1.82 megahertz uh, that's what that's showing and then uh, the filter is almost completely out by 1.88 megahertz, which is the response I was hoping for. And then after that, the signal is at full strength. There's probably a very slight signal loss, uh, insertion loss. Um, but uh, anyway, you can see the general response of the filter for this uh, with the use of the, uh, the noise source. Okay, so the noise source on and the filter in. And the noise source on and the filter off, the full noise source. Once again, filter in, and you can see how uh, the uh, filter is filtering out and attenuating the noise source about 15 decibels. Once again, noise source only, and filter in. You notice there's a little bit of a lag here. That's just the response speed that I put for the the, uh, the graph. Uh, so when I change between filters, it takes a couple seconds to fully respond to the signal change. So here you see the theoretical filter response as it was computed in the uh, program ELSI. It's a filter design program. But you can see here that uh, it dips down um, right about uh, 1.8 megahertz down 40 decibels. This is supposed to be it's supposed to go down about 40 decibels um, of drop. Um, but if we look back at the actual filter, um, we see that the drop in the filter is uh, about 15 or so decibels. So not quite as deep of a attenuation as as the theoretical suggests, but real world uh, real world testing you know often reveals. Uh, deficiencies in filters and filter design. But anyway, you get an idea of what the theoretical is supposed to be. You see this little dip here as well, um, right after the the full uh, attenuation uh, ends. Uh, but there's a slight dip here, 
And if we look back at the actual response, uh, we also see that slight dip here. So uh, that's not surprising to see that, but it seems to be, at least the pattern of the filter response seems to be similar to what the theoretical is, although it doesn't attenuate quite as deeply um, as the design suggests. Okay, so today I demonstrated one use of the BG7 TBL noise source and using it with SDR Sharp uh, to uh, test the response of one of the filters uh, I built, uh, one that I think I demonstrated on one of my other videos. Um, anyway, um, these are out there on uh, eBay for $20 or so. There's several different versions. This is the March 6, 2016 version. There's other versions from as old as 2014. I don't know if there's a newer version than this because I bought this a few months ago. But uh, anyway, you can use this along with SDR Sharp to do a, a simple filter uh, scan to see your response of some filters. There are other programs out there that will allow you to actually sweep a filter and use this to sweep an antenna as well to get uh, antenna response or filter response for filters that are a lot lighter, ban wider bandwidth that SDR Sharp won't let you use. But anyway, it's a neat little uh, thing and it's uh, helped me see that my filter design is not as nice as I would like it to be, but it does show that my filter works. At least the general response trend is what I expected. Anyway, I uh, hope you got something out of this. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask me and uh, thanks for watching.